Hi everyone, my name is Beth Brown and I am counsel in the Pensions Group at Mayor Brown. Welcome to this episode. In these episodes, we cover different topics each month, providing an overview of the issues faced by pension industry practitioners and offering some practical insight. Time spent listening to these episodes can count towards listeners' continuing competence and PMI CPD requirements. All the episodes are available on our Mayor Brown YouTube channel, as well as iTunes, Google Play and Yahoo. You can also subscribe to this channel so that new episodes are shown automatically in your subscriptions feed. Hi everyone. In light of the fact that Clara has been approved by the pensions regulator as a defined benefit or DB super fund and the industry is one step closer to the first transfer to a DB super fund, I thought it was a perfect time to look at the pensions regulator's guidance for trustees and sponsoring employers considering transaction with a DB super fund. Therefore, in this episode, I'm going to summarise the key points arising from that guidance. Before talking about the guidance, I think it would help to start off with a short explanation of what a super fund is. A super fund is a DB pension consolidation vehicle that brings together several different pension schemes into one single fund. Super funds are designed for schemes that have no real prospect of achieving buyout and allow the seeding trustees and the scheme sponsor and employer to discharge themselves from their liability towards the scheme and its members. The key advantages of super funds is the cost efficiencies linked to economies of scale and the pooling of risk. However, super funds are still a relatively new concept and as of yet, no pension scheme has made that leap into a super fund. As noted though, Clara has now been approved by the regulator as a DB super fund and I expect others will not be far behind. So we could see the first transaction in 2022. The regulator has published guidance for trustees and sponsoring employers considering transacting with a DB super fund. The first point to note is that prior to entering into a transaction with a super fund, trustees and sponsoring employers must demonstrate why they believe the transaction is in the best interest of members and how the transaction meets the gateway principles. In summary, the gateway principles are one, that a transfer to a super fund should only be considered if the scheme cannot afford to buy out now. Two, that a transfer to a super fund should only be considered if a scheme has no realistic prospect of buying out in the foreseeable future, given potential employer cash contributions and the insolvency risk of the employer. And three, a transfer to the chosen super fund must improve the likelihood of members receiving full benefits. Therefore, a transfer to a DB super fund is prohibited for schemes likely to be able to buy out in the foreseeable future. Trustees will need to be prepared to explain to the regulator the rationale and assumptions underpinning any conclusion that buyout is not a realistic prospect within the foreseeable future. What is meant by the foreseeable future will vary from scheme to scheme, as it will be specific to the employer's circumstances, but In general, the regulator says that it expects this to mean a period of up to five years. As well as ensuring that the gateway principles are satisfied, the regulator expects seeding employers to apply for clearance in relation to any transfer to a DB super fund. This is because the regulator considers a transfer to a DB super fund to be a type A event. A clearance statement would give assurance that Based on the information provided in the application, the regulator will not use its contribution notice and or financial support direction powers in relation to the transaction described in the application. The regulator says that trustees and employers should notify it as early as possible when they are considering transferring to a super fund, so the regulator can commence its engagement at the earlier stage. It is even willing to review and discuss a draft clearance application. When looking at a clearance application, the regulator will focus on assessing whether any potential detriment to a scheme caused by the transfer has been adequately mitigated. The detriment here being the removal of the seeding employer's covenant 
and the mitigation being the transfer of the scheme, along with any top-up payment or other mitigation. A key consideration of the regulator in its assessment of whether any detriment has been adequately mitigated will be whether the super fund can demonstrate that, once the transaction has taken place, it will continue to meet the regulator's expectations regarding capital adequacy. Moving on now, I will briefly talk about the responsibilities of seeding employers and seeding trustees. Starting with employers, they will in many cases provide any additional capital necessary to meet the super fund's entry price and facilitate the transfer. Seeding employers will also have to ensure that the regulator and trustees have all the information they need to be able to fully consider the proposed transfer. This could include, for example, access to senior management and financial forecasts of the employer and, if appropriate, the wider group. It is also worth noting that, as well as taking their own professional advice, the regulator expects employers to pay for the professional advice that the trustees need to inform their considerations of any proposed transfer. This can include, for example, reports evaluating the employer's market position. Moving on to the responsibilities of the trustees now, as mentioned, they must be satisfied that the gateway principles are satisfied and they can provide a rationale for their conclusions. Trustees must carry out due diligence which is proportionate to the scheme. When considering a potential transfer, trustees should obtain and consider appropriate and proportionate legal, actuarial and professional covenant advice in relation to the scheme's current position and the gateway principles. Trustees will also have to continue to fulfil their legal duties to their scheme. For example, they will need to ensure that member records are accurate and complete and also consider whether the scheme should be equalised for the effect of GMPs before transferring to a super fund or whether the super fund has accounted for the additional costs incurred in equalising GMPs. The final point I would make about trustees duties is that trustees will need to ensure that they communicate with members. Trustees should be open and transparent with members about the planned transfer to a super fund throughout the whole process. It's also important that, given that a transfer to a super fund will be a really big change for members, that trustees reassure members by being clear in communications that they have carried out appropriate due diligence and reached the conclusion that the transfer provides an increased likelihood of members receiving their full benefits. DB super funds are still new in the pensions industry and the legislation on the final authorisation regime for DB super funds is still awaited, but it is clear that progress in this area is being made. So watch this space. All that's left to say is happy holidays and I look forward to speaking to you again in 2022. This episode is an overview of the law in this area and how the law will apply in any particular case will depend on the individual circumstances. Please therefore remember to seek legal advice on your particular circumstances.